Welcome back to News First. With melting ice caps and rising seas, climate change is something that will affect everyone, especially those who live in coastal areas such as islands. To combat these changes, Guam, along with other islands, have banded together to work towards a more sustainable future. Let's check in with PNC's Amanda Dedicatoria for the story. In 2015, the United Nations adopted 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, to urge the world to build a more sustainable and prosperous future. To further these goals, Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio joined other island leaders at the UN Climate Change Conference to launch the Local 2030 Islands Network and establish Guam as part of an initiative to bring together governments to collaboratively work together and develop solutions that would advance the SDGs at the local level in ways that are culturally relevant. Just last week, Governor Lou Leon Garreau signed Executive Order 2019-23 to create the Guam Green Growth Working Group, which would allow public and private sector partners to work together to create an action strategy to meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Chairing this group would be the University of Guam's Center for Island Sustainability, which Dr. Austin Shelton, the center's director, says would provide a great opportunity for Guam to work towards a sustainable future. When we're working together um, across the island with all the new partners that we, we hope to bring together as part of this Guam Green Growth Initiative, uh, we'll be able to put all of our progress, all of our accomplishments in a dashboard and um, we, we, we report it up to the United Nations and we will show how Guam is contributing uh, to sustainable action globally. In addition, he adds that because Guam is a part of the network, it could also reach out to other islands for guidance. We'll be able to, um, to share these innovations with other islands. We'll learn lessons from the other island members uh, as part of this local 2030 islands um, partnership and really be able to advance uh, sustainable development goals. Amanda Dedicatoria. PNC News. Founding partners and supporters of the local 2030 Islands Network include Guam, the Marshall Islands, FSM, and more. In regional news, the Federate States of Micronesia may soon be the site of a new United Nations multi-country office in the region after getting the endorsement of other Pacific Islands nations. Here's more. A United Nations presence in the Micronesian subregion has been, for many years, a goal that Pacific Island nations have continually pushed for. With the United Nations recently announcing its plans to have a dedicated multi country office in the North Pacific region, establishing the new sub regional headquarters in the Micronesian region is one step closer to becoming a reality. The proposed regional office not only establishes UN presence in the area, but it is also supposed to address the needs and priorities of island nations such as the FSM, Palau, Marshall Islands, Kiribati, and Nauru. Following the UN's decision, the presidents of the Micronesian sub-regional group met for an interim session at the FSM's permanent mission in late September, just before the opening of the 74th United Nations General Assembly. After the meeting, the five presidents signed a letter endorsing FSM as the new UN MCO. The letter was later transmitted to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. This is Luella Lucina for PNC News. Guam's newest craft beer production brewery is officially open for business. PNC's Charles Eckert has more. With a ribbon cutting to mark its grand opening, the Guam Brewery is on a mission to become Guam's national beer. Located behind the historic San Miguel Brewery in Harmon, the company has a facility designed to create a line of six craft beers made to reflect One, the flavors of the island. Two, three, salad. As a local businessman and part owner of the brewery, Jay Merrill says they have an outstanding product that represents the very best of Guam. This is a beer that's made here, that reflects the flavors that were designed for our people. It is utilizing techniques and equipment that's state-of-the-art, and it's made by a head brewer that has won awards in California, in Denver, and in Europe. Head brewer Mike Converse says it's been a nearly three-year journey to get to this point and explains what this means for Guam. Well, it gives a fresh local beer that's made here. I mean, we're making it here as fast as we can, and we're going to have it in cans in the stores. 
and the hotels and restaurants as fast as we can get it up. Merrill adds the craft beer line is a Guam product seal product developed specifically for the taste of the people of Guam. We have six flavors ranging from very light, our gold cream, to our porter, which is a chocolatey and delicious dark beer. And we've got all of the other range of flavors in between. The Guam Brewery has its products featured at its tap house located in Tumon, but is preparing for wider distribution at different locations around the island. Charles Eckert, PNC News. Up next, Crime Stoppers takes a look at the featured unsolved crime of the week with GPD's spokesman, Sergeant Paul Tapau. Off a day, I'm Sergeant Paul Tupau, your Guam Crime Stoppers Coordinator. Now this is your Crime of the Week. On Monday, September 3rd, our officers from the Higanya Precinct Command entertained a robbery complaint that occurred on Route 10 by Nana's Court in Barragada. Now the preliminary police report suggests that around 8 o'clock in the morning, the victim secured from work at the House of Liberty Game Room in Barragada and offered a ride to an unknown man who was a customer from the establishment. While in transit, the male suspect reached over and grabbed the victim forcing the victim to pull over. During the course of the struggle, the suspect was able to take the victim's wallet and fled towards Nana's court. The victim only described the suspect as being possibly local. Now, the Guam Police Department and the Guam Crime Stoppers is asking the help from the community relative to this case. If anyone has any information, you're encouraged to submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All tips will remain completely confidential and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads to an arrest and a grand jury indictment, your call does make a difference. Destiny Cruz and Leo Payumo have your weather and sports lineups next. Hafiday Marianas welcomes to your three-day weather forecast. I'm Destiny Cruz and thanks for tuning in. Today we experienced only partly cloudy skies as the sunshine still made its presence known earlier today. Daytime highs reached almost 89 degrees, but thankfully isolated showers along with freezing northeast winds cooled high temperatures down for us. Moving into this evening, we can look out for similar weather, so please remember to drive carefully as roads can get slippery, slippery when wet. Cooler temperatures are also expected this evening as winds coming from the northeast freeze to the island at 10 miles per hour, later becoming light and variable. Lows tonight should sit at our usual 77 degrees, so besides a little rain, we should be smooth sailing throughout this evening. Jumping into Friday and Saturday, it looks as if more partly cloudy skies accompanied by isolated showers and thunderstorms are ahead of us. Light and variable winds on both days are set to cool daytime temperatures nearing 89 degrees as lows in the evening cool things down to a nice 77. And that wraps up today's weather report. As you can tell, even though we are experiencing rainy weather, our island continues to maintain that heat. So be sure to stay hydrated no matter the weather. Have a great rest of your evening and be sure to tune in next time for more updates. Adios.